Okay, so I am Ralph. Is that possible? Okay, this is Henry Ralph. Well, look at this. Shnei Shvar and Tami. This is a very long Mishnah. Shnei Shvar and Tami. Shachavu Zebezeh. They have two oxen which are both Tam. The damage each other. Misham bin Moser Chati Nezek. They each pay half Nezek in the... Uh, they, I'm sorry, they don't each pay. Let's say one was Mazik 50. <laughs> Let's use names. The ox whose name was Ruvain was Mazik. The ox whose name was Shimon, okay? The ox was Shimon was Mazik Ruvain. Ruvain was Mazik Shimon $80. Shimon was Mazik Ruvain $50, right? So Ruvain's owner pays how much money to Shimon's owner? Right, 15 Right, page thirty divided by two, fifteen. Right, that's what it says here. Shai mos chatzin nezek. Shnei muadim. If they're both more, but shai mos nezek shan, then they pay the complete thirty. Right, because whoever pays pays from thirty because it's a more. To echot tam echem more of one is tam what is more. More but tam the shai mos nezek shan the more. We pay for them. Shatam pays uh, in the in the in the uh, excess. Full damage, time by more, which I'm most of the he pays in the excess half damages. Ruvain beat up Shimon and Shimon beat up Ruvain. So then, Mishami, Bomois, Mishai, most of the Mishai, sorry, Mishai, most of the Katinez, because there's no other more of the Yolam. There's no Katinez by human beings. Now, it's important we learn back on Dab Gimel and Bayes, that's only if they both try to judge simultaneously. If one retaliates against the other guy, Ruvain struck, struck Shimon, and Shimon retaliates Shimon as Potter. And uh, retaliation is Potter because it's considered to be self-defense. But uh, obviously, if they're fighting with each other still, but if it's simultaneous, each guy crashes into the other simultaneously, then you reckon who will damage to more, and they pay the, whoever did more damage pays the excess. Okay? Uh, other the time, the time, uh, a man locked horns with an ox, not quite literally, but you get the idea. And more than the human beings. Then uh, both of them are more, so whatever the excess is, they pay Nezik Sholem. Right, if the ox is a tam, then Mishayim uh, Mosar, Adam Betam, sorry, Adam Betam Sholem. Uh, but uh, the most of the most in Ezek Shalim, the other against the time pays Ezek Shalim. Vice versa, the time be 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 Adam, the time pays against the Adam. We shall have most of Chatzin Ezek in the in the, the excess half Ezek. We kill my half time Shachav Adam. We kill all the Ezek because that he he has short time which damages an Adam. We shall have most in Ezek Shalim pays full damages in the excess Ezek because of. We don't pass that again, but that's where we give a hold. Shor shavim manishnogach le shor shavim asayim. An ox which is worth a hundred, da- a gordon ox which is worth two hundred. Okay, now we could do it with numbers, it gets a little more complicated. Uh, not much. Shor shavim manishnogach a one hundred dollar ox, of course a two hundred dollar ox. Vein of ele yafaklum. Assuming the carcass is worthless. Naitel asashor. So the, the person who was damaged takes the damaging ox. Because that's worth a hundred dollars, and that's half of his damage of two hundred dollars, right? So far, so good. So shor shem masai. If you have the case an ox is worth two hundred dollars, should no gach le shor shem masai with child gordon ox worth two hundred dollars. Vein avail yafiklum, and the veil is worthless. I remember Mary said I was in that mind. This it says umarchos that shor achai. They should sell the live ox, which is worth two hundred dollars. Chatzus kats, but they divide up its value. Um, the Rabbi, the Rabbi said, "Bechet alocha." Is that the alocha kiyamta? You fulfilled the part of the pasuk which says, "Vegamis hamais umachlus hashor achai v'chazus kaspo." You fulfilled the uh, part of alocha which says that you sell the live box and divide it up. But lo kiyamta, but you didn't fulfill the other part of the pasuk which says, "Vegamis hamais yagutun" to divide up the dead carcass. So you have to give a case where there's a carcass to divide up. Basis said, what's the case like that? Shor shem asayim, the ox worth two hundred. Shenoga ach lo shor shem asayim, the gordon ox worth two hundred. But the veil of a chamishim zuz, and the veil is worth fifty bucks. The veil is not completely worthless; it's worth for dog food fifty bucks. Zen atel chati achay v'chati emes. This guy gets each one gets half of the live one, that's a hundred, and half of the dead one, that's another twenty-five. So Yisrael walks away from this crime with one hundred twenty-five dollars, right?
They split up both the live one and the dead one, right? Now, the Pnei Moshe points out that the Bible it says, and this is important for the Yerushalmi we'll see later this evening, but it says that I may not need to argue in, in the case of Shvach Nevela, who owns the Shvach Nevela? But the Nevela, let's say, at the time it, it was the the ox was gored to death, it was worthless. But then, for some reason, dog food became expensive. And this went up in price. You know, this roadkill went up in price to a higher, to a higher level. So, it, 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 but at the time of the damage, it was worthless, right? So who owns that, uh, who owns the Shvach Nevela? So, uh, 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 Rabbi Meir holds the Shvach Nevela belongs completely to the Nithak. Belongs completely to him. It's not, uh, even if it goes up in price, that belongs, that Shvach belongs to Nizak. Rabbi Rose, Shvach Nevela belongs to both of them, and they split it up. So that's Rabbi Rose's case, case where even when it started at zero, but then went up to 50, Rabbi Rose, they split that Shvach Nevela, the increase in value which Nevela underwent. You look like you're in pain. No, just. I always I'm not aware that it does. I don't think so, because here's really the Torah being Mazaka. I don't know if Uman or Kohen Rishvach are the same type. I don't want to say no, because it's possible, but I've never... It's a rugged cover like uh, Tzush, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It sounds, sounds like something which you might find something, but I'm not sure. Okay, offhand, I've never seen them related. But Baba Kam is not one of my uh, strong, strong receptors. Shoshavimana. Uh it's actually one of my weaker mistakes. <laughs> anyway, Shoshavimana. So now the Shoshavimasai. You have an ox that so says the Gemara. You have an ox where this is basically a Tosafta paralleling our Mishnah. Shoshavimana. You have an ox worth a hundred bucks. So now the Shoshavimasai, which which goes an ox worth two hundred bucks. Vain and avail. You have a clue in the veil is worthless. No, I tell us. I show you take the live ox. It's only worth a hundred dollars. That's your damage. You take the live ox. You only get half your damages, so that's why it's the value of the damaging ox. Therefore, what happens if the damaging ox is dies or goes down in value? So it's really the same thing the Bible says. It doesn't go above the value of the surviving ox. So if the surviving ox depreciates. So it's le- worth less than half. That's the problem of the nizak. That's his. He, he suffers that loss. Okay. Shor shav and money shor shor shav and masayim. You have an ox which is worth a hundred, which gore an ox worth two hundred. He kishu chamishim zuz. So the ox again. This is Reuven and Shivan. Reuven a Reuven ox. Is a distinguished rabbinical family in Toronto, the Ox family. Well, it's not spelled that way, it's spelled O C H S. Uh, anyway, <laughs> right, like Ox, right. Um, so, uh, so Ruben Ox, Ruben Ox is worth $100. Shimon Ox is worth $200. So Ruben Ox damaged Shimon Ox by 50 zoos. Chazar Achlan and Shimon Ox turned around and damaged Ruvain Ox by Chava Bo Shloshah Shazab $75. Okay? So he damaged each other. One damaged to the tune of 50 and the other damaged to the tune of 75. Now here is Gilin Hashaz Rabbi Yitzhak, not Rabbi Yitzhak, the, the Gilin Hashaz on the side. There's an interesting comment and they pick up, the Achrenian pick up on this, which is that Rama Paschal is Gemara literally that Ruvain gored Shimon and then Shimon got Ruvain. But the thing is, as I mentioned earlier this evening, we know that if it's in retaliation, call him Shana Ba Achim Shina Ba, so then Shimon is Potter. Shimon's master should be Potter, and that, that that's in fact the way the Rosh and the Mukhiyesi Paskin that the only way this Gemara takes effect is if it's simultaneous that they gore each other, but not if one gores in retaliation. But the Rambam does Paskin. That even if Shimon goes in retaliation, so Shimon is liable to pay. And because uh, of uh, Achrayim wanted to be Machalik in the Rambam, the Rambam was by an Adam, if an Adam retaliates, then that's, for some reason, Potter. But for sure retaliates, for some reason, that's Chayev. 
I guess it has something to do with the nature of the different da- different nature of damages when it comes to your ox goring and in terms to your to your responding to to you know one can be considered self defense but the ox is not defending itself. I don't know exactly. The yeah, I would have thought the opposite too. I'm asking. I would have thought the opposite too. But when asked, that's why one has to think through, which I am not. Uh, I didn't give it that much thought. But uh, the uh, one has to think through what possibly different could be, which would lead to the counterintuitive result, which is in fact the Rambam Shita. Very good. You're, which who who's the ox? All right. In any anyway. event. Says no further. Sure, sure. It's good to see the tape didn't pick that one up. So even Hasheni Mishaim were original Chati Dinah Zov. In that case, so the distinction is fifty. Is fifty seventy-five minus fifty, and it's twenty-five divided by half is twelve and a half. Okay, it's a very simple case. I don't know exactly why they had to give the oxen value. The value doesn't play a role in the end. Each one the gourd each other, but there's a line missing here, which is in the Bavli and also in the Rambam, and I don't know how it escaped the Ushami. It should say, the damage is only 50 bucks. Okay, an ox worth 200, gourd another ox worth 200, damage is only 50 bucks. Rushalim Hishbiach Vare Yofar Bamios. Now, the second ox number two went up in price. It didn't wasn't killed. It had fifty dollars of damage. Went up in price then. Said being worth two hundred dollars worth four hundred dollars. However, she lona gacho, if now for those fifty dollars of damage, her Yofar Shmon Mails it would have appreciated all the way up to eight hundred Zeus. So it lost in appreciation. There was no loss per se, because the $50 is more than made up by the increase in price. But there was a loss in potential appreciation in this case, right? Loss of potential profit, right. Exactly. Okay? Right? Make sense? So in any event, uh, 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 if before they went to court, it went up to value, and they only had get the damage of the uh, of the time of the uh, Nezek, which means half of fifty, not, not, not doesn't matter, right? Even if it could have gone up to eight hundred, too bad. All the all the guys to pay is half of fifty. Hikish and lokashas hamoda b'din b'vad, and if it goes down in price, then however, which is not our case, but if it went down in price, then you could go actually can claim more as it stands at the time they get the base in. So in any event, we uh, we give the uh, we give the nizak a benefit of the doubt here, with the limited sense. In other words, he, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. It, it goes after the loss at the time of the damage, unless it goes down further, but not if it goes up more. In other words, unless the loss becomes greater before they get to court. In which case, you go after the time to get to court. But if the loss is eradicated by a rise in the value, even if the rise could have been greater, in that case, it's frozen as half payment of what the Nezik was actually at the time that the Nezik occurred. Is that clear? It was always going to be, it's not going to, even if the, uh, the, the prevention of the Minyas Rebach is not going to be half said. The fact that it could have made much more. That's not going to be something which I have to pay for. I just have to pay for half of the actual loss I caused. But if the loss continues to accumulate until I go to court, so then the meter keeps on ticking until I get to court. So it's the opposite, though. If, if, um, if you pledge something for hectish and the value goes up, exactly. Yeah, a hectish or always machmir, right. right. Always machmir on the guy, right. That's not a hectish, right. That's no, so, the opposite principle. Right, of course, yeah. Because it's been on the not been on the Bakum. He says, "I'm Rabbi Law." Rabbi Law said, "Kini mas nisin." This is the way to read our the Brisa. He's biach hamazik. If the, this is talking about not where the nizak went up in price, where where the damaged ox went up in price, rather where the damaging ox went up in price. Imach lo amad bedin. He's biach. 
if it, 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 even though it went up price before they got to court, and you could say, well, true, nezek is mishtalim migufo, right? Only up to the value of the ox, but the ox was dubbing value, so I should be able to get more from my chatzin nezek if theoretically it's a larger sum. So no, we don't do that. Helikashas nisko. It's all, it goes after the time when the damage occurred. Right? He, and also vice versa. This is both for the, the benefit of the mazik. Hikish, if the, the, the ox which did the damaging goes down in price, ain't the little So basically, it also go only after the time when it gets to court, which means by its new diminished value. So we go by whichever and the value of the damaging ox is lower, the value at the time the damage occurred, or the value at the time that they get to court. Okay? My, my time, my mayor, What's the logic of Mayor in our Mishnah? Who said, uh, uh, Amar, the post says, Umarchus Hashar Chayva Chatzu is Kaspo. Right? So therefore, we just divide up the value of the living ox. Umamakaim, all the Akronim say, Umamakaim Rabbi Mayor. What does our Mayor do? Vagamasa Mesia Chatzu. In other words, Kronim right? Mayor will tell Shvach Nevelo Lenizak. Right? That the damage, the, uh, the damager, the dam, the, uh, that the, 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 the carcass goes to Nitsa completely. Right, they don't split it up. So what is it? When do they? Where do they split it up? So they don't really. It means me conscious them after chatzinezer was them after chatzinezer. What it means is that they divide up the chatzinezer. In other words, each person gets a uh, half of the net of the of whatever is left uh, of the uh, the equity in the two oxen after everything is said and done. Bein Echanam, he doesn't know the Shvach Nevela Lamazik, he doesn't know that he actually divided the Shvach Nevela. If the Nevela appreciated price after the, uh, the ox died, it was scored to death, so that, that appreciation all goes to the Nizak, not to the Mazik. Okay? Says the mission further, Allah Yud, Yesh Chayv HaMais HaShoro, there are cases where you're liable for something your ox does. Upata HaMais HaShoro, what example is something you yourself do? And by the case where Chayva Maisatsi live with something you yourself do, Upata Maisa Shora and your example is your ox does. How so? Shora should be H. If your ox, let's say, addressed somebody in the street, don't ask me how, but did it damage? Just a, was revived somebody, right? Potter. So the owner of the ox doesn't do anything. Oxen don't generate embarrassment. Human beings generate embarrassment, oxen don't. Okay? Uh, if he himself was a revive somebody else, Chaya then of course he's liable to pay. Conversely, is ain abdo. If your ox blinded your slave, or he pilshino causes tooth to fall out, butter, then you don't have to uh, release the slave. The slave remains yours because you didn't do it. The slave, the, the oxen. But who should seem? Excuse me. Who should see me saying Abdo? If he blinded his, his slave's eye, people are saying, or knocked out his tooth, Chayev, then he's liable. Of course, because liable here means not to pay, but rather for what? To get him low. Let him go. Um, isn't he responsible for the actions of his, of his ox? It's who? It's the owner of the ox. Isn't he always responsible for his ox's actions? Yeah. So, how come in this case? He is, but he's not responsible. It's his own slave, so who's he going to pay? He owns a slave. Who's he going to pay? No, then he have to pay, yeah. But here it's his own slave. Okay, so theoretically, you're right, but he will get the money anyway. Okay? Uh, if your ox... See, you're not allowed to kill your parents, but you can send your ox to do it, right? You're liable. To pay for your um, for the damages to your parents, because your ox was allowed to do it and did it and has to pay. <coughs> Be himself damaged by his spot because of what principle? Kilirimani <laughs> exactly. Okay. Shor shili because I got it. Shabbos. If your ox ignited fire on Shabbos, Chayev, you're liable to pay for the damages wrought by your ox. Who should leave us on Rosh Hashanah's part, or why? For the same reason they should deal with Nafshah because of Kinder Rabbeinu. Ben B'toy Omer, Ben B'toy says, a famous Gemara, call Makalkel and Petorim. Anybody who's Makalkel is exempt on Shabbos, of course. Chutz bin Amavir v'Osel Chaburah. We don't actually pass like if I recall correctly. Even though it's a little off here, maybe I'm mistaken. But um, 
he says that some of you make the fire or some of you make the wound, they're high being because of Makalka. Why? Because these activities are considered generally being Makalka. The Torah is Makhaib on them. It must be the Torah is Makhaib on them even if they're Makalka. On Rabbi Yochan, not true. Yochan says it's only Chaim Mamavir, ain't no Chaim Achitzarch Leifer. You must require the ash, which you make in not Makalka, because you need the ash. With Chavos Chavura, if you make a wound, now libel unless you need the blood, because then again it's beneficial, right? So it says more, wait a minute, Fatina and Shoro? What about in our mission? It says, your ox is part of uh, to pay the lights on Shabbos. If you're going to say that you only hide for lighting fire if it's beneficial, when is it beneficial for an ox to light a fire? And if it's not, if we're talking about an ox, not, it's not beneficial for ox, so it's partial the ox is chayv to pay. You'd be chayv to pay too. Because makalka b'chabura, according to Rabbi Yochanan, is, is, is part of from Hilchel Shabbos, so you'd be liable to pay. So the case in our mission where it says that you're part of from paying must be a case where you did it for a positive purpose. In other words, you did it for for the ashes. So why is your ox doing it? So it's more, it's an ox that needs the ashes. He likes tumbling in the ashes, so he burns things down. It's a pyromaniac ox. Okay, there are such things. Vice toys, that's what it says. Okay, next Mishnah. Shor shor de bacha shor acher. Ox number one, Brazilian ox number two, Vuhuzok. And it was damaged. Ox number, the the uh, ox number two is damaged. Zell Master, the owner of ox number two says... <laughs> Shor chizik, your ox damaged my ox. Pay me. Valoi man, the owner of ox number one says, Nah, lo kiela b'selu I tripped. So who actually fell because of the board, not because of my ox. Amotzim chaver of araya. The guy's got to prove that there was because of the ox that his ox was damaged, not because of the seller. Otherwise, the other guy is bought it. Doesn't have to pay. So off the hook, right? There's no proof that his ox actually did the damage. <laughs> Right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, you proved there was no rock there. Hayashnai Merofi, if there are two oxen, pursuing Akar Echad, pursuing one ox. Zeomer, one says, Shorcha Isik. Zeomer, Shorcha Isik. So each of the owners of pursuing ox say, the other guy's ox did it. Shnei Pturit. You can't, you can't, can't make either of them pay. How are you going to figure out who's going to pay? If they both belong to one person, then they're both liable because man of Shachu was his one one of his two oxen, his two one of his two pursuing oxen which did the damage. If one of the pursuing oxen was large, and therefore it's worth more, so Chati Nezik is worth more. If the one is small, therefore the Chati Nezik is both worth less. And Isaac Omer, the one who's the guy who got damaged, says. I got a lizik. The larger ox damaged my ox. But mazik, oh man, the mazik says Loki elo as I caught an The 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 smaller ox was the one who did the damage, right? So uh, obviously they have to do a recount here, but they can't. So what do they do? Um, so, uh, so but <laughs> these two guys attack an oxen. So in any event, so uh, so in this case. <laughs> Uh, 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 we, uh, uh, or, the following case, the two pursuing oxen, one was the Tom and one was the Mord. And Isaac called me and Mord Isaac. And Isaac says, the guy, the ox who was a Mord damage, so therefore I get full damages. But Mazik called me and the Mazik says, Loki, I love Tom Isaac, right? Again, here we say, I'm Otsim Chaver, I love Araya. How you and Isaac of Stein, there are two damaged victims. One was, in other words, two separate, uh, two separate uh, oxen owned by two separate people, one large, one small. And Mazikin and the damagers are also two separate oxen owned by two separate people. Echel Gorov, Echel Kotel, one large, one small. And he's a Gomer, Hagoro, he's a Gorov. Now, it's not necessarily, it could be the same person, but the Gemara assumes that it's two separate people, despite the next clause, since it's really the same person. And he's a Gomer. The damaged person says, "Hagadol hizik as a kol gadol, the cotton as a cotton. The large ox damaged my large ox, and the small ox damaged my large small ox." A mazik omer, and the mazik says, "Loki el cotton as a gadol, but goes a cotton. Switch him around, and that way he has to pay less, right?" 
So that uh, or echot of echamur, two acts of pursuing one time and one more. And he's a cover of more eyes because I got all your more acts damage my large acts. And so I can get uh, you know above and beyond the value of the damaging acts. But Tom is a cut and the Tom damage all your smaller acts. If I magic over the man says, Look here, Tom is because I got a more as a cut the other way around. Also, I'm not some have a love Raya. Okay? Now, Rabbi boy, what is based in Mao? What is coming to court to? Now, nobody understood this question answered in the Gemara. Uh, real, literally nobody, until finally, well, until I came along. But, and I found what I said afterwards in the Yifei 9. Well, actually, the, the Yifei 9 is perish on the Bavli, which was because I'm the Ushami. But when they reformulated it for the Yushalmi, they called the rule of I don't know if he did it himself or the, or the editors of the Yushalmi did it. But Lemaisa, he points out that the Gemara is asking a question for which it doesn't, the answer doesn't fit the question. And all the Achorim try to figure out how the answer fits the question. It really doesn't. So there's a line missing actually in the Gemara, and the only based on that can understand the Gemara's question. And uh, answer and question. So I'm going to just tell you what it's what it's for, for that, but not yet. <coughs> I'll just tell you first what the Gemara's question is. He asks, if you have two nizakin, right, two damaged victims, or two oxen owned by two separate people, and they come and they say, well, you're, they come to two damagers and say, uh, or the one, one damager, the guy who owned both damaging oxen, the large and the small. They say, well, your large damage, the large and small damage the small. He says, no, my small damage the large and my large damage the small. So he gets out of paying that way. So what about if they come to court together, though? They form a corporate entity, Nizok Anonymous, right? The un- union of Nizokin, of Nizokin. So can they get more money out that way because they say, you know, for sure, each guy is li- you know, he, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the case is, but they could generate more liability that way. Let's try the following case, where there are two damagers and two damagees, right? So this way they can demand more, because from each damager they can demand that he actually... I'm still not sure exactly how that would work, that they demand more. The Tosefta does bring down the case where they can demand more. But somehow, there's some something which of two oxen damaged and which of two oxen got damaged. So if they come independently, so then each guy could say, I prove that my oxes want to gourd you. That's what it is, right? So if they come together, then they say, for sure, one of your two oxen damaged. It's corporate yeah, And no matter what, your oxen damaged our oxen together. So each one independently, the master could say, I proves that I owe you money, maybe I owe your friend money. And the friend, he comes and he says, I must have a life, proves that I owe you money, maybe I owe your friend money. So then, neither of them can collect. But if they come to basin together? That's the Gemara's question. The Gemara's answer doesn't, is not really an answer. Mao, the Shemina Minado. So the Gemara bring out, they bring out a very nice price, which is a fascinating price, so don't get me wrong. But it doesn't answer the question. That's because the, the, whoever wrote the Ushami left out the main line and the price which answers the question, which is the line before this part of the Tosefta they're about to bring down. And the line reads, I'm, I'm fixing it because there too in the Tosefta, the line is not clear. And so the Achraim changes. It should say, There were two damagers and two damagees. They all cut the base of Chayovit because they're corporate entities. Ankle and boiler basin, they don't all cut the basin together, but two in. Then each of the mazin can say, I didn't damage you. You have to prove that I damaged you. So therefore, the bottom line is that the answer is from that part of the Brysa, which is not brought down here. And then the more brings down the rest of the Brysa, which is nice, but nothing, nothing to do with it. So actually, wherever the Messiah, the Yushami, inadvertently dropped the main line from the Tosefta, which is necessary, and brought the rest of the Tosefta, which is not something which is unheard of in the Yushami. Apparently, before they quote the wrong part of the Pasuk, they quote the wrong part of the Mishnah. This is also symptomatic of that phenomenon. Okay? But take a look at this Brysa. It's a very nice Brysa. Shnayim Shazok Shnei Two guys... Through, uh, uh, through two rocks. They broke two jugs. One of wine and one of oil. 
Now the drugs belong to the same person. But this guy says, I broke, the wine is cheaper than oil. It was. And this guy says, I broke the wine one. The other guy says, no, I broke the wine one. Each one pays. Because I'm sorry for, says, play motion. Difficult play motion. Says something very weird. But, for <laughs> each one pays for a bottle of wine. So the guy is out the difference between his, he had a bottle of wine and a bottle of oil. So he's out the difference between the cost of oil and the cost of wine. And this guy could say, Azir Rock broke the bottle of wine, not the bottle of oil. Okay, similarly, <laughs> one drug was empty, one drug was full. This guy says, I broke the empty drug. The other guy says, no, I broke the empty drug. They both pay empty drug, right? Because obviously each guy has to claim. And the guy loses him into an empty and full drug. Shavu Chavis, they broke a drug. They only broke one between the two of them. Each guy says the other guy broke it. They're both exempt because you can't prove anything. Okay? And the parent. I have to get a tissue. Excuse me a second. Two people are doing each one could have done it. Shaim Shasu. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're both doing it. But there they both did participate. Here each guy says it wasn't me. It's not too much. as a corporate entity. Each guy wants to get off the hook because he wasn't him. So, you know, you, you, the result is the same, but the far I don't think it's the same. That's interesting, Tushna. Okay. New parak. Shoshnogach Arba Chamisha Shvogim. An ox that scored four or five oxen. Zeh Okay, this now it remains a time because as though they didn't uh, muad is the only way to tell the owner, you know, keep your ox uh, tied up. But this ox was on a rampage, so it scored four or five oxen as a time, one after the other. <laughs> so zeh yishalim lachro, zeh yishalim lachro. You pay the last uh, You pay the owner of the last ox. You may have but most of there's anything left afterwards. <coughs> then you pay the owner of the second to last ox. If there's anything left after that, you may have most of the ox of the for go to the one before that. Akron, Akron is the lowest that guys down, they get the money. The last guys. Now, why is that? Why should the last guys get the money? So Ray Mayer holds that the uh, the uh, Ray Mayer. This is Ray Mayer. Ray Mayer says that the Nizak, those who are damaged, are 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 what's the word? Lean holders on the damaging ox. They're bali choiv. So therefore, <coughs> even though normally by bali choiv we say the first guy, the first guy has the debt first. He has the earliest lien, and everybody else has later liens. Here's the opposite. Because here, the ox which gored is an ox which had a lien attached to it by the first guy. But it, that doesn't help him. Because it makes it even worse. Because it's your, it's, it's an uh, ox of Ruvain with the lien of Shimon, the lien of Levi, and the lien of Yehuda, the Mazik, uh, ox. So therefore, Yisachar has an ox with many liens upon it, goring his ox. He has first lien. He has first rights now, and it goes builds back and builds back. So it's the opposite of a normal loan, where the first guy has dibs on land because the land is passive. It wasn't mazik. It didn't do anything, right? It's just a source of collection. But here, it's where the ox is going and goring other oxen. It's an ox with my lean upon it going and goring. So I bear some responsibility. So it's the last guy who has the first lean and goes backwards and so on and so forth. Is that clear? Ruvain's ox scores Shimon's ox. Yeah, I know what's happening. Now, now Shimon gets an, a lean on Ruvain's ox. Now Ruvain and Shimon's ox. Ruvain's ox with Shimon lean, lean, Shimon's lean on it. Goes and gores Levi's ox. Oh, so 
all responsible for the land. They're all responsible, so that's why the last guy gets the gets first, and then you build backwards if there's any money left afterwards. And I have a more simplistic way to explain the same thing. That had the leader been able to be warned that people yeah. were on his eyes, he would have he been able to do that. Since he wasn't, it's as if it's becoming a more by the time it goes to the third floor. He just wasn't, he didn't go to the Well, you're not. Yeah, I don't know if that's what the yeah, no, the simplicity. I but I don't I don't think it's true. Uh, I don't think that that's logic here. I mean, the Ushami doesn't really explain logic, but I don't think that that's logic. But look at Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon, right? Rabbi Shimon over here uh, has a different shot, shot here. Shimon has shorts of a masain. An ox worth two hundred. Shimon has shorts of a masain. Which requires an ox worth two hundred. Vein of Vail of Kum, the Vail is worthless. Zenoita Mona, Zenoita Mona. So each one gets a hundred bucks. Now, Chosavanogach Lesharach, now here he looks at Shimon as now having acquired a share of Ruvain's ox. It's not just he has a lien, he acquired a share. Right? It's more than that, it's Bylus. So since he acquired Bylus, so therefore. Uh, when the, this ox, which is now owned by Ruben and Shimon together, Chazim now the Shorachah goes Levi's ox, right, which is Shavim Asim, which is worth two hundred dollars. Achor to Levi Noita Mona, Levi gets a hundred bucks. Mishal Lefonov, because Ruben and Shimon's ox scored him. Mishal Lefonov and the two guys before Ruben and Shimon, Zenoy tell Chamishim Zuz, Zenoy tell Chamishim Zuz. Each of them gets fifty. But now, who else is an owner of this ox? Levy's an owner. And Levy is a 50% owner, and each of the other guys is 25% ownership. So as this ox goes merrily round the town, goring and goring and goring, so then he gets more and more owners. And the owners split up shit. What's the word? Uh, um, proportionally. They split up proportionally now the ownership. So it's not that each guy is about Chov riding on the ox, but each guy now becomes an owner on the ox. So therefore, it's an ever-diminishing pie. It doesn't go to the last guy exclusively, but the pie keeps on being divided up in further slivers. And the further you up you are in this pyramid scheme, the less of the pie you have. The further down you are, the more of the pie you have. But everybody retains a hand in the pie. Is that clear? So the last... <coughs> The last guy will always have 50%. He'll, the last guy will always have 50%. The guys before him will have, you know, ever in decreasing proportions thereof. So the pyramid is actually the bottom part is the last guy. Right, 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 right. So that's a, uh, uh, and that's the next case. Uh, uh, Another one, Ha'achor Noita Mona. So the last guy, he get the 50%, right? Shoel Chamish, who's the guy before him, has got a quarter, right? He's got 50. Rishon and Rishon, the first two divide up another quarter. Shnei Shnei Dinar, each one has a, uh, 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 Dinar Zav has a, uh, I mean, each one has a quarter, each one has 25. But when they start out, one guy owns two hundred dollars worth of this ox, which is full value. Then it gored somebody. Then each guy owns one hundred dollars. Then it gored another guy. Then the last guy owns one hundred dollars. Each of the first two get fifty dollars, right? Then it gored another guy. The last guy gets a hundred dollars. The, the the guy who had a hundred before, he now had goes down to fifty. The guy who had the guys who had fifty before, they each go down to twenty five, right? If it gored another time, so the last guy would have a hundred. The guy before that would have 50, the guy before would have 35, and the first two guys would have 12 and a half, and so on and so forth. Okay? So that's how it works. So there's my Rabbi Yane. <laughs> Rabbi Yane says, Ball of Rabbi Meir Mishnitzon. Rabbi Meir's is a little bit more complicated than I explained in the Mishnah. Not much, but a little bit. Manashoch. The guy says, the last guy to get damaged says, to the guy before him. There's a long line of creditors here, right? So he says the credit for a man of shah. Im shokhahi, if it's yours, shokhahi, tnaili, give it to me. Right? Give it to me. I want it because it's yours. I get half of it, so I want my half. 
right? It, it ain't no shocha if it's not yours because you're also a creditor. It's if you're an owner like Rabbi Shimon also, I, so give me my half. If you're not an owner, you're only a creditor. So today, Elisha Venu. So I should say I should hold it on in order to collect it. Why should I hold on or collect it? Why am I any better from you? Right? Lechera. Why is creditor number four superior to creditor number three? If they're all creditors. So Lochet Amar Bilezer didn't, uh, uh, um, didn't, uh, that each guy who's, uh, in terms of Shemir Sizok, is like Shemir Kenyan, and therefore the parameters are like Kenyan. And if the parameters are like, in other words, of course, they don't necessarily become the owners. Fine. But they're involved with this Masik, right? So therefore, it should have the same parameters as ownership, like Rabbi Shimon says, and it should be split up in a pie shape as opposed to the loser taking all, right? The last loser taking all. So it says, huh? Amr Le Rabbi Rabbi said it should be Nimsurol in Azakov. It's given over to the guy, to the creditor for Nizakin, meaning for his damages. But Eno Elo Kimashko mi Bebenehon. It's a Kimashko mi other. It's only like a Mashko in his hands. Meaning whoever is holding on to it is holding on to it for collateral. It's not really his. In other words, Let's say Ruvain talks to Gord Shimon, and then Gord Levi, and then Gord Yehuda, and then Gord Yisachar, right? So Levi's rights in it are as collateral. Shimon's rights are in as collateral, not as ownership. Levi's rights are in as collateral, not as ownership. Yehuda's rights are as collateral, not as ownership. So Yisachar comes and says, look, if, if it was really yours, you owe it to me anyway, right? Because I'm the last guy to be Niso. So like Rabbi Shimon said, I, should, I get $100 worth. The last guy down, it's constantly, so just like the, the Zokin transfers from hand to hand, right? Nimsel, uh, 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 it's given over for because of the damage as collateral to the last person down on the line. Now, I'm not sure why it should work that way. I have to be honest with you. I talk and don't understand fully why it should work that way. But that's what Amir is for. Amir says, it's either acquired like Rabbi Shimon. It could be that that's correct. In which case, the last guy for sure gets it. Or, it's like collateral, and the collateral is given from hand to hand as it's been mazik successively. And therefore, the last guy to be mazik holds on to it as collateral. Since he's holding on to collateral, so this might not be fair, but the byproduct of that is that he gets paid first. And only then does he release this collateral to the guy before him. And only then does he release the collateral to the guy before him, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm not. I don't like Rebbe Mayer particularly much. I mean, no offense. I love Rebbe Mayer, but I don't, I don't understand this part of that well. But he's saying is that when it's if you regard it's collateral, it always goes to the last guy to be damaged, because for him it's the ultimate collateral. See, if the ox would be, let me explain it perhaps a little bit better. If the ox would be mashubat, like a piece of land which is stationary and not doesn't not deliver to anybody. So the first guy's lien remains primary, second guy's lien is secondary, third guy's lien is, is tertiary, and so on and so forth. But here it's the ox is not stab parastatic. The ox is actually being given as collateral to each guy down the line. And the Morris is laying down this axiom that just like the Nizokin passed on, so to the collateral passes on to the last guy. And the last guy, de facto, is not going to release his collateral until he gets whatever he's supposed to be paid. Then he'll go back to the guy before him as collateral to get whatever he can realize. And then he'll go back before him to the guy before him as collateral and so on and so forth. Okay? All right, so it's not the same thing. It's just using the word, the term collateral. <laughs> no, there's big enough communities. That's what I'm going to say. So what's the difference between Rameh and Rabbi Shimon? So Rabbi Yochamar Hektish Meneu. One difference is Hektish. Now here it says always Rabbi Yudin and Rabbi they're all typos. Everybody says it's supposed to be Rabbi and Rabbi Shimon because Rabbi Yudin and Rabbi are not the authors of our Mishnah, right? So Rabbi and Rabbi Yudin and Shimon. So I did the Rabbi Meir Makti Sharishon. Who owns it? Who owns it? Just Reuven, the original owner, he owns it. Everybody else has collateral rights in it, but who, he only, only Reuven owns it, right? So Adaiti Rabbi Shimon Rabbi Shimon 
and as many owners and so on and so forth because they're all partners in it. I'll die to, uh, 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 Hoke, what if it went up in value? I'll die to the Rabbi Mayor, Quarant Mayor, who Kulavisha. The first guy gets any increase in value because it's all. He's the owner. I'll die to the Rabbi Shimon, who it should be the Shneim. Uh, not just Shani, but the Shneim. Both of, all of them. But at the tikkunim, by the way, I'm making are done by the Gil and Ephraim, the Shaitar Israel, and the Mecham Mayim. We all make the same tikkunim. It goes, uh, goes to the same. It goes to both of them because they're all corporate owners. Also, schar, similarly, if they rent it out, by Hertz rent the cow, Hertz rent, rent an ox. You know, they, they're renting it out to make money. I died to the Rabbi Shimon, the mayor, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that's the Rabbi Shimon, good old mayor, has schar larisho. First guy gets the rental fees because it's his. I'll die to the Rabbi Shimon as Chalish name, then they split up the rental fees. His biach, it went up. I'm not sure the difference between Hukra and Hishbiach is. Hukra, I think it means the price of oxen went up. Hishbiach means it got fatter, and therefore, you know, it has more value. So I'll die to the Rabbi Meir, Hishbiach, we showed that the increase in value is for the first guy. I'll die to Rabbi Shimon, Hishbiach, Shnein, they both get the increase. Om Rabbi Yochel, Rabbi Yochel said, the Rabbi Yud and Rabbi Shimon, Shnei Merum, Udo Varachan. Now here, Taka, Rabbi Yud and Rabbi Shimon are, are Rabbi Yud and Rabbi Shimon, we don't change the gears here. Which Rabbi Yud are referring to? Rabbi Yud we learned earlier this evening. Earlier this evening, we learned Shvach Nevela. Remember, Rabbi Yud said, if Nevela starts up being worth zero, and it goes up to 50, they divide up that 50. So Rabbi Yud is very similar to Rabbi Shimon that he holds his corporate ownership in the Nevela. Rabbi Shimon said about corporate ownership in the Goring ox. Rabbi, you, you, Rabbi Huda is talking, was talking in the previous parrot about corporate ownership in the ox that was gored. But there's similarities in that they both hold up corporate ownership in the, uh, in the various oxen. And Remeyer, in contrast to that, held that Trach Nevela belongs solely to the Nizak. In the previous parak, when it went up from 350, the nizak gets that. And here I may hold sole ownership remains also by the mazik. So he doesn't hold of this corporate ownership business. Okay? So very, very fundamental division between Rabbi Shem and Rabbi Yudah on the one hand. Either Rabbi Shem and Rabbi Yudah don't agree among themselves, as we'll see presently. But the Chin and Svore. Rabbi Shem and Yudah of the corporate ownership of the mazik and the nizak. Rabbi Meir holds that that doesn't work that way. The Mazik is completely the owner of what he, of the damaging ox, and the Nizak is the owner of the damaged ox, and never the twain shall meet. And that's what I was about to say. One Rabbi Yochanan said, 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 Kana, right, the Mazik is Kana in Shvach Nevelo, Ken Rabbi Shimon or Marconi. Rabbi Shimon holds the Mazanizak is kinda in the Goring Ox, right? El Ashik read what's the difference? It should be now here we have to change it. It says Rabbi Shimon or Marconi Lachai, Kala Mace. Rabbi Shimon says there's a kin in both in the living ox, meaning the Goring Ox, and in the dead ox, meaning the ox which was gored. Both of them, you have the kid. The mazik and this are, are corporate owners in both. That's Rabbi Shimon Shita. For Rabbi Yehuda, in the previous parak, Oimer lo kana le We only know he holds a corporate ownership in the case of the dead ox, not the case of the live ox. Okay, so that's the difference. Talmudin, we learned over there. Rechay shloisha shreitil lekis. This is the case we had. This case back in Ksuvas. Although here, since it's Nazika, there's a slightly different, slight, slight nuances of difference, but essentially we have this case. One more minute. <laughs> you have three guys who invested it together. Now, I know if you remember this, so we learned this in Ksuvas not so long ago. We learned about a year ago. So we learned uh, Ksuvas that on the returns, they all get equal. They don't get proportional returns. I invested 40%. You invested 30%. The other guy invested... Uh, well, so that's no good. I invested 45%. You invested 30%. The other guy invested 25%, right? So on the returns, we divide them all equally. All right, 33 to 30 each. Why? Why? It's As partners, not proportionally. I'm Raibun. Raibun says, Nirin... That makes sense. 
if they bought a pearl. The Ocha Memelai, the Chway of Lam Memelai, the guy who gave only 25% could say, Ilo Sarti Dinari, Sarti Dinari, we're not to set aside, I guess it means a tenth here. But we have not given it to part my money, Lois, Maz, Ben Klum. In other words, that pearl, we're all important because you need to have a certain set price in order to make up that pearl. So therefore, whatever the pearl realizes in the value, you couldn't have bought it without me. So therefore, we're not going to divide proportionally, we're rather going to divide up. 33%, 33%, 33%. However, but if we invest in, say, in shares, in mutual fund shares, with something which can be split up, we reckon the proportion and you divide it up. That's what he holds. Um, Rebbe Lezer says, no, Rebbe says, no, but I feel Dovah should darko l'chalek. Even say, which can be divided proportionally, we don't divide it proportionally. We say divide it based on the partnership. 33, 33, 33. The Yochav Eim the guy who gave him less, could say, Ad pragmati didach sagin, you had a lot of money or a lot of merchandise you had to invest. You weren't so liquid. Vat manata mizbanta would be hard for you to buy and sell. And there, Vana, I, Pragmati Didi Kola, I don't have much merchandise. I don't have much schlera. And therefore, I'm much more liquid. For I would have made many more investments, pulled out more quickly, and eventually reached the, the, the value which you had as well. So that's what he's saying. Basically, what he's saying is there are advantages to being heavily invested and advantages to be lightly invested. And each one can theoretically keep on investing and reinvesting until they reach the same level. Because the heavy investor is less liquid. But he has more vet to invest. The, the investor which has less money is more liquid. But he has less to invest, right? And therefore, he's saying that even in a case where they invest in not in a one single pearl, but in mutual shares or something like that, so still, an argument can be made that they should split up based on the partners, not based on the proportional weight of their investment to begin with. Now, it's difficult for us to conceive of this because it's unheard of, I'm sure, in modern financial systems. But we did have it in the Mesopotamia, and that's the idea. And, of course, this is going to come back. We'll come back to tomorrow night, obviously. It's going to come back to the corporate ownership of the ox, which we're dealing with over here. Eventually, when we'll get back around to it, we'll stop here for this evening. Thank you.